So I was recently making this apple plum wine with a 71B yeast and for the life of me, I could not get this thing to start. I was patient with it, stirring it, whatever, for uh, I think it was six or seven days. Anyway, I finally got the thing going and here's what I ended up doing. I ended up just following the manufacturer's instructions. When, <laughs> when all else fails, just follow the instructions of the people that give you the product. Why not? Who would have thought it? Anyway, so instead of just pitching the yeast on top, which is not recommended for the 71B yeast, they do recommend putting it into a yeast starter. I did put it into a starter and I also did give it a yeast energizer. To begin, I took some water, heated it up to 47 or something like that degrees. I didn't quite get 43 on the bullseye. Waited till it cooled down to 43, just using my uh, meter meat thermometer to do this to give me a digital temperature on my phone and uh, once it hit 43 I added my yeast energizer stirred that up and then waited till it cooled down to 40 degrees once it got to 40 degrees I went ahead and pitched my yeast and started in pretty vigorously to get this kind of dissolved the yeast kind of wanted to stay on the top so I had to give it a pretty good mix to get this yeast down and uh, after that just cover this thing up now while I'm waiting for it to cool or just to rest a little bit, uh, according to the instructions, uh, you're supposed to wait for 20 minutes before adding to the must or doing anything with the must. So I did that and uh, got myself a cup of must out of the apple wine or out of the plum apple mix. And then as soon as I got to that 20 minute mark, I started by adding about 10% of the apple plum mix and let it sit for about a minute or two, start again, add another 10%. And I kept doing this and got a little more aggressive, like 20% is what I would add the next time, kept stirring in between. And it didn't take long for me to see that this was actually going to work. Oh, I, did, I forgot to mention actually, I added some brown sugar as well, uh, just a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon, just to give the yeast a little something to chew on. I didn't want them to starve in case I wasn't doing this correctly, so I wanted to give them at least something to eat if they uh, did rehydrate. I didn't want it to time out. Not sure if you need the brown sugar at all. Following this method, probably not. Anyway, I did do it, so this is my what I did and what worked for me. Once I had all of the apple plum must mixed in with the yeast. It didn't take me long. Uh, I, I could see right away this thing is bubbling and there's activity. It looked like it was very hopeful right out of the gate. So just by me mixing the equal part of the must to the yeast mixture, it didn't take long for the temperature to cool off and uh, be within, uh, I think it was four degrees of the must temperature, which was sitting at 25 degrees. Uh, so I think at 29 or 30 is what I ended up doing. Gave the must a really good stir and uh, just poured the uh, yeast inoculant or the yeast starter mixture into the must and I gave it another stir after I poured it in. Now there was a little bit of activity the next day but it wasn't, at least I thought there was activity but I wasn't sure if I got it going. It wasn't until the next day where I really seen this thing kickstart. So two days after I put this thing in there, this thing is now fermenting like crazy. It's going absolutely nuts. I mean, you can just hear the fizzing going on, the bubblers going. I'm very happy I got this thing going. Now in the future, I probably will continue to use up that yeast energizer. I'm going to be a rehydrating a yeast kind of guy from this point going forward. I've only, this is batch number seven of wines that I've made. I've only made seven batches of wine and twice I've had trouble starting the yeast for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's, uh, both times actually have been with a plum off the tree. So I'm not sure if that's a something to do with the plums or whatever the case is there but anyway i just don't want that trouble in the future i'd like to be able to pitch something start it and not worry about it but this is going to be my go-to going forward i'm going to be using firm o and go firm go firm is uh, what i'm going to use to rehydrate the yeast and then firm o is going to be my yeast nutrient 
Uh, there's going to be more on that in a video later on or on another video talking about it. But that's what I'm going to use to rehydrate and put into the must going forward. And hopefully I get a rock solid start every single time. Uh, I don't like to willy nilly. I'd like to just have a recipe or a, a system or something that works. So I will post back with feedback and I will do kind of like a versus uh, just a yeast energizer, just a generic one you pick up at the uh, local brew shop versus the Go Firm. Go Firm wasn't available at my local brew store. I had to get that off of Amazon. Anyway, that'll be the way I go forward. Uh, if I do look further onto the manufacturer's website, they actually recommend a Go Firm. I think it's Evolution, but uh, I'll put that uh, screenshot of that up here so you can see what they specifically recommend. Long story short, if the manufacturer recommends it, these are the guys that are producing this yeast for us to use. I'm just going to go that way and get a better result in the future. 